Hey there, it's uh, been a little while since I made a video, but hopefully this is interesting enough to make up for it. What I've got going on here is a Tipman 98 E-Bolt minus the E, I'm calling it for now. And what I mean by that is it is a Tipman 98 with the E-Bolt RAM minus any of the electronics. If you weren't already familiar with these kits, they converted a 98 Custom. They didn't actually fit a Model 98 without modification, but they would convert a 98 Custom to an Electro Pneumatic. So you're at a circuit board and battery. Actually, your battery would hang off the side a little awkwardly. Circuit board and a grip and a pneumatic RAM. The idea with this is to still get the pneumatic RAM without a battery or circuit board. And the trick to um, sort of replace the electronics, the job that the solenoid would be doing, is to create that pulse of air. And that's what uh, this unruly mess of stuff here does. It's clearly not, uh, not its final location. This is just how I was able to test that the parts or the idea will work. And what the primary components are here is a clippered, I believe this is PV1 pulse valve, two of their MEV2 exhaust valves, a flow controller, which is, we have one right here, Looks like FC2 flow controller and this is a little switch I made up that contains a I think it's an MCV3 anyway there's another little clippered valve in there very common in paintball so the end result is this will probably be condensed down into a single unit if I can actually create you know replicas of these parts in a single unit but uh, the general flow is this is our main component the pulse valve which is designed so when a supply of air is presented to the input a single pulse will go out the output however the this is designed for industrial purposes um, that pulse is 100 milliseconds, roughly. Or actually, I think it's fairly accurate if this unit was new. It's not. But this would produce a 100 millisecond pulse. And then some period of time to reset the whole unit. And for this use, 100 milliseconds is way too long. You don't want to slam the valve or slam this forward and hold the valve open for 100 milliseconds. We really. I think uh, for a, a RAM system, I think we're looking more around 12 milliseconds. I'm actually not sure off the top of my head, I'm just winging it right now. So to achieve that result, I'm adding a flow control here. So when air is supplied to the inlet, I'm actually also supplying air to the top side of this valve. Normally this would be closed off because the way these valves work is air comes in through the bottom, pushes a piston up, which then allows air through the outlet, and the piston actually has a controlled leak through the middle of it. So the, the diameter on the piston on the bottom is lower than it is on the top, air leaks through, and as the pressure equalizes, now because we have a larger diameter piston up here, it pushes back down and shuts this off. To create the shorter pulse I want, I'm introducing a controlled flow into the top here. So by adjusting this flow control, I will actually be able to affect the dwell of this mechanism. And I'm hoping the usage of exhaust valves will also reduce the time it takes this system to reset. There's no springs inside. So essentially after it cycles, you have a pressurized unit here, which you need to bleed off before it can cycle again. And in the stock form, that takes, it doesn't take a long time, 
but when it comes to cycling a PayPal marker, it's too long. So at the point now, this actually functions. Um, I have an off-brand. It's the same. It's the same as the Tipman uh, Pro Shop rig here. Just it didn't get any of their markings for whatever reason. It just has the patent number. To a low-pressure kit with instead of the volumizer, an ANS uh, older ANS LPR. And none of things hooked up to the trigger right now. To test this thing is I have the little head of the valve here, which I just simply push. So what I can demonstrate is that this actually does fire. So it will fire, there's, there's nothing over here. I don't have it on camera. Uh, I don't have any barrel or cover, but there's nothing over here. And the key with this pulse thing is even if I hold this down, I'll still only get a single blast of air to the ram. And that's kind of the important thing. You can't have it so you're just holding the trigger. If I pull the trigger and the ram stays forward the entire time the trigger is held, that's not going to be workable at all. So the idea here is we create, you know, a consistent firing of air regardless of how long I hold the trigger to, you know, within reason. You have to make sure you do fully pull the trigger uh, because this does have to at least stay actuated long enough for all these mechanisms to go. I can ensure that the pulse doesn't exceed a certain dwell, but if you release the trigger or only kind of partially depress and make this system just kind of leak, um, you could end up with shorter. So I have air in the tank. Uh, this is off right now. The pressure is set somewhere that I have found reasonable. So I will just slowly turn this on. Okay, we now have air to the entire system. I will just demonstrate first. Now I push the valve. I don't want to do a slow kind of push. The real switch, which I think is a Fabco MSV2 maybe. Um, the idea is that you're you're quickly going from the closed to the open position. You don't want to like slowly move this thing. That also throws timing off. However, you see I'm holding it. Release. Hold it. Release. So each time I push that button, I only get one pulse from the ram. So, there we go, nothing too fancy. Um, this concept, I know, works. Obviously, this is a pile of clunky equipment. I can easily at least fit a switch in here whether or not i'll be able to make a smaller version of the pulse valve with the equipment i have and um the exhaust valves i don't think i would try to make the exhaust valves but the pulse valve i think i could make that um hook that up to the switch and maybe get all this equipment to fit in the grip once i mill it out so the end result would hopefully be um a mecho pneumatic instead of an electro pneumatic, which I think could be rather neat. I do have to make myself a little push button for this. I just threw this, just melt this up real fast so I could test it. And it is a pain. time there where it's misfiring that's just because I'm not fully pressing it or fully releasing it because I'm just using my pliers and trying to push that little stem there so nothing really more to show there other uh, other than the fact that I think this is pretty cool so I keep pushing it
So there we have it. That will be all for now. Uh, this is one of many projects I have started. I'm hoping to continue going with this since it's now a working proof of concept, besides the fact that its guts are all on the outside. And I will try and follow up. I tend to just start working on stuff and kind of throw things together real quick. Let's get this degassed here. So I'll try and follow up and see if I do end up making a smaller pulse valve. Um, hopefully I can get it into the grip. If not, I could run lines through this. Hoses could go through here and perhaps mount something, a unit, on the side, which is actually how the original E-bolt would store the battery up here. So it wouldn't be out of place to actually hang um, a pulse valve assembly up here, perhaps covered with the same kind of box, one that's hopefully less likely to fall apart. Anyway, that's all for now, and I'll uh, hopefully show you more later.